everybody what's up we're at the northeast council's 45th convention which is taking place at mystic and i'm just going to introduce you to the lovely ladies of the axolotl rescue liberty axolotl rescue and we're going to talk a little bit about axolotls otherwise known as the mexican walking fish there's a lot of things that we didn't know about that i hope that we can help clarify today so um we talked yesterday i forgot your name Paige. Paige and Kristen. Yep. Um, one of the big things about axolotls that I wanted to know is care requirements and temperature. We all have fish, but axolotls a different kind of fish. I'll put some footage in below a little bit later. And um, tell me about the temperature. What is the requirements for keeping these guys? So these guys are a little bit different than tropical fish um, in the sense that they need a temperature range from 62 to 68, ideally a little bit more on the cooler side of like 64, 65. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when we see them in like local fish stores and things, tropical fish stores, a lot of times the temperature, it's really difficult to keep the temperature cool enough to keep them healthy. And that's one of the reasons that we work with some local fish stores to actually have them send people to us and then we you know give them a consideration for sending them to us and we can adopt out some of our lovely yeah. recipes. And now you hit a good point because the local fish stores don't often make it a point to tell people that that temperature requirement is a thing. So people I being one of them automatically associated with fish temperature, which is somewhere below, uh, you know, 70, 77 degrees. So now, what do you do in the summer when the temperature gets really hot? I mean, you guys like run a chiller for these guys or? Uh... Some people will use chillers, so it really depends on your environment. Um, I know, uh, you know, a lot of people that will put their tanks in the basement because it naturally stays cooler down there. But yeah, so if you're in an area where, um, you know, your house is going to be very warm, you don't have a cool space to keep them, some people will invest in chillers. There's other options. Um, so for example, you have uh, a tank here with a little bit of egg crate on the top. That's uh, this kind of plastic stuff. Okay. Um, and if you're needing to keep the tank cooler, if you cover the tank with the egg crate, you can then put a fan blowing directly down oh, onto okay. the water. Mm -hmm. right. And then as long as the water is circulating and you've got the fan blowing down on it, it helps to keep the temperature cool. Yeah. If you're in a really warm place, um, that's when people sometimes will invest in chillers. They're a little on the pricey side, so mm -hmm. other options, there are um, hang on the side fans and things that are actually made for cooling tanks. Oh, okay. There's also the DIY freeze a bottle of oh, water and I've tried throw that. those in the tank. And, and, um, and have like 10 bottles in your freezer. Yes. Yeah, my wife loved that. I think she <laughs> drank one of them one time. So, uh, But yeah. that's always an option too if you notice you know, the tank is starting to like really get warmer than you want it to be and you need to drop the oh, temperature. Okay. Now, the number of axolotls that you can keep in the tank. I bought one five years ago for our wonderful veterinary science program. Shout out to Lincoln's veterinary science program. So Axel has been with us for about five years and we were trying to get another axolotl to put in there with them. But now is that a good thing, a bad thing, or how do you go about grouping them together? So I'm sure mm -hmm. he's perfectly happy on his own. Oh, he's a um, couch potato. <laughs> as long as you give them enough space. So right. you can run into aggression issues when you put more than one in a tank if they don't have enough space no. or if they don't have enough food then they'll start nipping at each other, that's when you can have issues. Um, because we are not a breeder, we're a rescue only, we only recommend doing same-sex tanks, so we would recommend, you know, another male for Axel and companion. Um, that way, you know, if you have a male and a female together, they will breed, and if it's a good you thing. together, they will just continue breeding over and over. And, and they're over. egg layers, no? They are, oh, okay. yes. But if you allow that to go on, it can, they can actually they can the set themselves out. to death. Yes. Oh, so, so have two tanks on standby. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, and yeah, like I said, we don't encourage breeding. There's so many out there already that need <laughs> homes. So we do not do any breeding ourselves. We just take them in. You know, if there's an accidental, um, oh, I woke up and there's eggs in the tank, our advice is always, um, you know, take the eggs out, freeze them, okay. cull them, dispose of them. If they've already hatched and you've got little babies, that's, you know, where we can step in and help. Um, 
But one of the other concerns if you're thinking about having more than one in a tank is besides gender size. So for example, um, we've got two adults over here. We've got Boyd and Kim. And those guys, if I was looking for a companion for them, because they're so big, we wouldn't want to put one of these little like four month olds right. in with them. We would want to grow those guys out a little bit more because the bigger guys, you know, they can more matching size. Naturally mm. bully a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you want to try to get them to the same size or at least within like an inch, inch and a half of each other. They'll hear my voice and they automatically look up looking for food. They're like, really these intense. Guys will start we'll start looking up. They're really if reactive. I had, see, if I, if look I at them, had look my up tongs, now. if I had my tongs, like the shadows and things, if I just try to get their attention, you know, that way they'll, especially the, these two are very interactive. Now these, the glow ones? Oh, we should actually, neon? yeah, I have my, yeah. So you got a black the, light, the blue GFP light. The GFP ones. It's like a disco now, yeah. it's like the 70s. And some don't oh, look have, at that. some don't have the GFP. That's a natural pigment, or is that like some It was bred into them when they first came into yep. the hobby. Um, so from jellyfish. But they're born that way now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you can see how He's the glow, bluish, and then yeah. this golden doesn't have that glow. So you can see the difference in how they... Same thing with these two wilds. One has the GFP and one does not. Well, excellent. I definitely learned a lot. I appreciate you guys. Now, if we want to contact Liberty, you know, Liberty Land, Axolot of Rescue, how do we go about doing that? We are on Facebook. Facebook? Yes, oh, welcome to the world of social media. Main way to get in touch All right. with us. Um, we are, our team is on there, so what we also do besides rescue, rehome, um, rescue, rehab, and rehome is education. So that's why we've got our whole tank set up here, um, and we are available on Facebook Messenger for people who have questions whether they have adopted from us or not. Okay. Um, if you run into any kind of issues, you know, reach out to us on Facebook, and right. we're happy to help. All right. So here we are, Liberty Axolotl Rescue, check them out, thank you for watching.